Baby, Marge is pissed. She said, everybody understood what I was saying. And this one wants to jump in. She's on my list. Game on. (laughs) I love these women of New Jersey. Let's talk about it, y'all. Hey, my beautiful souls, welcome back to the channel. I am your girl, your host, Beautiful Soul. Before we get into the recap and review of Real Housewives of New Jersey, I want to wish each and every one of you a very happy Valentine's Day. I myself am single, but I will definitely be celebrating me on this Valentine's Day. Plus, I want to give a very special shout out to Clissy, C-L-I-S-S-I-E. Thank you for showing me some Valentine's love on the Cash App. I really do appreciate it. Your girl is going to do something nice for herself. All right. Let's get into last night's episode of Real Housewives of New Jersey. (laughs) Y'all, I love y'all for staying on me and telling me, beautiful soul, you got to watch Real Housewives of New Jersey. You got to recap the show. You got to, you got to, you got to, you got to. For years since I've been doing these recaps and reviews, you guys have been. Every now and then, y'all will pull me back to thinking about recap in Real Housewives of New Jersey. I love this show. These ladies are... (laughs) They just bring a nice balance of sisterhood, messiness. Um, Then they have the money on top to boot to show us a little bit of extravagance. I love um, how... It, it, I just, I'm just loving the show. So, so let's get into last night's episode. So the episode starts off. Um, we're getting Gia ready for prom. And so Teresa's all over the place. She's got food being delivered because, you know, there's going to be a little party, a little get together. Um, she's got hairstylists, makeup artists. Everybody's going crazy over at Teresa's house to get Gia ready for the prom. And Teresa's kind of like on overload because she missed Gia's eighth grade prom. So she's kind of like um, so hands on because she wants to make this one so much, so much more special because she missed Gia's eighth grade prom. We got to see a little flashback and and how, um, you know, Joe gave flowers to Gia, which were, you know, basically from Teresa, but Teresa was in jail, you guys know, at that time. So um, Gia's getting ready. Joe calls to give her love. Um, Brother Joe stops by to give Gia some love. Gia gets a little um, emotional because, you know, she misses her father. She wishes her father was there at the time. We're over at Dolores' house. Dolores and um, Frankie are getting ready. Frankie is a really handsome handsome guy. Gia and Frankie actually look good together, but I don't think they're looking to be any more than friends. We're back over at Teresa's house and um, Daddy Frank arrives, Big Frank arrives, and um, we're over at Jennifer's house and Jennifer is getting herself ready for her brother's fundraiser. They're having a fundraiser um, later that night. She's in her closet trying to pick out a dress. She gets to talking about her daughter, Gabby. And the bullying that her daughter, Gabby, you know, is dealing with. Sorry about that, guys. That was my alarm. Um, but you, the bullying that her daughter, Gabby, is dealing with in, in school. Uh, they get to talking about her and her husband. I think his name is Bill, the doctor. Get to talking about what went down at Margaret's party and Joe um, approaching 
I think the husband's name is Bill. We're going to call him Doc, the doctor. And what he said to him about Jennifer needing to be bumped off. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, and he just, the doc felt that it was just, uh, you know, a little bit in- inappropriate. So we're back over at Teresa's house. Um, Dolores arrives. Um, Gia's getting her dress on. We watch Gia. We got a little montage of Gia growing up over the years, a little flashback. Teresa gets emotional um, as she speaks about, you know, how Gia had to grow up a little bit faster than most normal kids. Gia makes her descent down the stairs. She looks beautiful. The color that she's wearing, this beautiful powder white, this powder blue dress is it's stunning. Um, and her and Frank get into the limousine and off they go. So we're back over at Jennifer's house. Jennifer and um, Gia are now arriving to where they're having the brothers fundraiser. And she lets us know because of the cultural differences, um, their mom wasn't always in attendance to these types of events to support their kids and things like that. But as they've grown up, they have um, educated mom on how things should go. And now that they're adults, whenever there is an event in place, um, all of the family gets together to support each other during that event. So the brother does his speech. They then do a performance. Uh, Jennifer is, you know, just over the moon for her brother. And she's very proud in how he stayed true to who he is, which is a gay man. And regardless of not receiving that full support from their parents, he still persevered and stayed true to who he was. And she views that as a perfect example for her daughter, Gabrielle. You know, if her uncle could, you know, live life proud, not having the full support of other people, then um, she's hoping that Gabrielle will recognize that she too, excuse me, she too can stay true to who she is and, um, you know, grow up to be just like her, her uncle. So, you know, the, the performance during the performance, mom is getting very emotional. She's tearing up. Once the performance is done, she rushes over, she gushes over her son, gives him, you know, all this love. We, you know, we know just in the last few weeks since I've been watching the show, um, we've seen Jennifer talk about how uh, mom has been dealing with trying to accept her son as a gay man and to see mom to the point where she's publicly loving on her son, hugging her son, showing how proud she is of him. You know, it's 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 a step in the right direction. She whispers to him, you know, no matter what, I'll always be there for you. So it looks like they finally hit that milestone where, you know, you love your children regardless. They live their lives. You love them regardless. So kudos to Jennifer and her mom and accepting and and loving their family member regardless of how they choose to live their life. You know what I'm saying? So we're over with Teresa. She's meeting up with Danielle. They have small talk about Joe and Gia and the prom and, you know, all that Teresa is dealing with where Joe, her husband, is concerned. Um, they talk about Marty how Danielle and Marty are doing. They're doing fine. Um, Teresa tells them about the Hamptons and Teresa um, also tells them about the Jersey, you know, tells Danielle about the trip to the Jersey Shore. And Danielle immediately picks up, well, it looks like she's being excluded from all of the trips and, you know, being a part of the goings on with Real Housewives of New Jersey. Teresa tells her, you know, the fact is, is that you, when you and Marge get together, it's a real toxic situation and the girls don't want to hang out with her because of that. And Danielle is like, well, you know, well, what about Melissa? What did I ever do to Melissa? Why does Melissa 
uh, you know, why is basically Melissa giving her the cold shoulder? She can understand, you know, the the issue between her and Margaret, but she does she doesn't have any clue as to why Melissa has kind of like backed off from her. Teresa told her, well, I think you should ask her why. I think Danielle at this point mentions that she's also going to be down, you know, on the Jersey Shore when they're going to be down at the Jersey Shore. So maybe she'll try to hook up with Melissa to talk to her then. We're over at Dolores. They're over at David's house. They're meeting a interior designer who's there to do a walkthrough of the house to get ideas and put some things together as far as decorating the house because Dolores does not want um what is her D- David's David's old furniture, the bachelor furniture to make its way into the new house. Now, y'all help me understand because the two, they talk, well, Dolores talks as if this is a house that they are moving into together. Is this the case? Y'all let me know. That's the impression that I got. The two of them are moving into this house together. And Dolores has some concerns about you know, investing in this house when he really doesn't want to have a serious commitment with her. Am I picking this up correctly? Okay. So I'm watching this whole exchange. David arrives and it's, it's, it's like he's there, but he's not really there. It's, it's awkward to me. Um, the interior designer is giving his suggestion, his ideas and things like that. But the entire time, it, I just felt as if David was dealing with a situation that he really doesn't want to be in. And he's just trying to get to an end result. What that is, I don't know. He doesn't seem to be all in in this relationship with Dolores as much as she is all in in this relationship. Um, throughout that whole entire scene, it felt like he was biting his tongue so that he wouldn't say some things that he was truly feeling because he's trying to get to an end result. I don't know. That's just that's just the feeling that I get. So they finish up with the interior um, designer, decorator. He leaves and then Dolores immediately starts pushing David in the direction of commitment. And he pretty much is kind of like standoffish about it. He does commit to getting new furniture with Dolores. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <sighs> okay, whatever. So she asked him if he's going to um, be going with her to the Jersey Shore. Again, he's not going to be a part of the group. He's on call. Okay. If she likes it, I love it. So we're all, you know, there's scenes with all of the ladies. They're all getting dressed and packed up, getting ready to make their trip over to the shore. Um, Jackie is riding with Marge because her hubby for what I guess he has another commitment that he needs to deal with. So he won't be arriving until the next day. So she's going to ride down with Marge and her husband. Um, Dolores is the first to arrive. Jennifer and her hubby then arrive. And then Marge and Jackie arrive after that. And then Melissa and um, Teresa. Teresa's, ri- of course, riding with Melissa and Brother Joe. They then arrive. They all get a tour of the house. Dolores has set these little cupcakes that have their pictures on the cupcakes. She has put them in the rooms where they're going to be staying. So they all have to go in search of these cupcakes to find out what room that they are staying in. Once everybody arrives, though, it's like a lot of this, these awkward hellos, especially between, um, Melissa and Jennifer and um, Joe and the doctor. Um, 
After they all find their rooms, they're down in the kitchen. They're just kind of hanging out, getting, you know, an idea of what it is that they're going to be doing later. And the conversation turns to prenup agreements. And, you know, they get to talking about who signed a prenup agreement versus who didn't sign a prenup agreement. Um, Jennifer and her husband, there is no prenup agreement because when she met him, he was a resident. He have nothing. Um, Jackie again tells her story about how her and her hubby ended up signing a prenup agreement. And then Teresa talks about how her and her hubby Joe ended up with the with the prenup agreement. And he basically told, you know, brought the agreement to Teresa one week before the wedding and basically tells her, you, you know, it's late because, you know, he never really wanted to get married in the first place. And everybody is standing in the kitchen like dumbfounded that he would even, you know, say this to her. And I'm just like, ooh, Joe is is a real asshole. Um, they get the talking and asking questions about whether or not Joe was faithful to, you know, throughout the marriage. And Teresa admits, you know, she doesn't think that he was faithful and talks about this separate cell phone that she found that had one girl's telephone number in it. And Jennifer was like, well, you know, what does that mean? You know, what does that mean? She, How did you know what was in the phone? Well, Teresa says, because I found the phone. And she goes on to explain that, you know, it happened when Gia was about three years old. She confronted Joe about it. He denied it and she believed it. And Marge, you know, tells Teresa, well, you believed your husband because you wanted to believe in your marriage. You wanted to believe in your husband. But the thing is, is that now Teresa absolutely believes that he was cheating on her. Melissa says it's not the fact, you know, they're not all there because when she admitted that they're all there standing there kind of speechless. And Melissa, Melissa explains in the confessionals, it's not the fact that he cheated on her because they all pretty much knew that Joe had cheated on her probably more than once in during the wedding because, you know, of course they flash back to some of the harsh things some of the unloving things that Joe has said to Teresa and about Teresa throughout the marriage. It's not the fact that, you know, she's, they're talking about it and Teresa's talking about it. It's the fact that she's now admitting it loudly and to herself, which probably makes it one step further or solidifies one step further for Melissa And Joe, brother Joe, that Teresa is going to end up divorcing Joe. So they break it up at that point. They all get ready for dinner. They're going to have dinner at um, some restaurant. Looks like it's on some type of boardwalk out by the pier where all the boats and, you know, all the rich people be basically. So, you know, they're, they all break. They decide to get, get ready for dinner while the ladies are getting dressed because, you know, it's the ladies that really, you know, take the most time in getting ready and things like that. Um, down in the kitchen, you got Joe, Frank, and Doc. Frank is busy tidying up in the kitchen. Joe and Doc, they get to talking and over what happened over at Marge's party last week. And they pretty much make amends. Doc tells him, you know, he he needs to have a little bit more respect. Joe receives it. They hug it out. I was like, look how the men, look how the men handle things. It doesn't get escalated to 100. They sit down. One expresses their opinion. The other expresses their opinion. They both are open to listening to what the other says. And they hug it out. And they move past it, even though in in the confessionals, Joe is being a little messy. But, you know, they hug it out and they get past it. So everybody's all set. Somebody, I think it was Joe, was like, should we take a shot before we go to dinner? Dolores is like, no, we ain't got time. We got to be there. Our reservations are in 45 minutes. Let's get in the cars. Let's go. So after dinner, they go. Um, They get to the table. You know, there's a lot of, you know, talk. 
happening back and forth. You know, everybody just having a good time. And then Melissa brings up and lets everybody know that Danielle is also hanging out on the Jersey Shore during the time that they are there. Um, Danielle reached out to Melissa and Marge immediately is like, I thought I smelled something in the water. <laughs> I got tickled. But, um, you know, Melissa lets them know that she re- that Danielle reached out to her and that she's going to meet up with her. And she's just basically going to tell her, you know, she went too far the last time and that they really don't want to hang around her. So, you know, the conversation continues on and Melissa then says that, you know, because Dolores brings up the fact in the confessionals that she can't believe that Melissa is still holding on to uh, whatever is going on between uh, Melissa and Jennifer. Well, let me back up Um, because when Jennifer, when Melissa was talking about meeting up with Danielle, Melissa then goes on further to say that um, Jennifer is also skating on thin ice. She's not so sure if at this point she wants to be around Jennifer anymore. And so Dolores then breaks in in the confessionals and says she can't believe that um, Melissa's still harping on this because it was Melissa who brought it up with, you know, insulting everyone and calling them losers and saying that Jackie was winning when they were all down in the Hamptons. Remember that conversation? So yeah, Jennifer um, is sitting there with her mouth wide open. She basically says, whatever, if you don't want to be friends with me, that's fine. Joe breaks it up, you know, and says and, and decides to, you know, make a toast. So They all make a toast. The conversation breaks up. That's the end of scene. So it's the next day. Everybody's down in the kitchen. There's more talk about Joe. And Teresa goes on to talk about how, you know, she's always stressing for money and how the kids, you know, are always talking about her working so much and that they, you know, they would much rather have her around. But Teresa is like, you know, you have to work because, you know, you got legal fees that you have to pay for and things like that. And Marge, Excuse me, Marge pretty much jumps in at this point and says, you know, I completely understand where you're coming from with the legalities of the situation because I'm also dealing with lawsuits. And so, you know, and having to pay lawyers so that you can address your legal issues, um, you have to work just that much harder so that you can stay on top of things financially. Jennifer is annoyed with the fact that Marge is bonding with Teresa in this moment over the fact that she, you know, they both have a common ground as far as having to grind harder to work harder because they have legal issues that they have to pay lawyers for. Jennifer chimes in and says, well, you know, you have Joe and Teresa pretty much doesn't have anyone. So, you know, you really don't know what she's going through. And I was like, Jennifer, you really are a knucklehead. Knucklehead Jennifer (laughs) is what I should call her. What do you mean? They're talking about the financial aspects of having to pay lawyers, which has to push them to work and grind harder because they have to pay these attorneys to deal with their legal issues. What are you talking about? Marge's business is Marge's business. Her husband doesn't really have to be involved with what's going on with Marge's business. Marge is being sued. So she grinds that much harder because she has to pay lawyers. Girl, what are you talking about? Teresa, She has legal issues. She has lawyers. So she has to grind much harder to pay these lawyers. So yes, Marge can absolutely understand where Teresa is coming from when Teresa says, I have to work. I have to work harder because I got legal issues that I have to pay lawyers to take care of. Girl, Jennifer, you are really a a knucklehead, a true knucklehead. 
Doc then chimes in and says, you know, children can be a little, he brings it back to, you know, children not understanding that the reason why you have to work so much harder. They just understand that mom works hard and they would like to have a little bit more time with mom, that type of thing. Marge was like, I didn't know Jen worked. I was like, ooh, here we go. Marge is annoyed with Jen at this point. And so Jennifer's in the confessionals, excuse me, raising five kids is harder than whatever it is that Marge does. Now, I'm not going to take anything away from Jennifer. Raising five kids is hard. But like you put your time and energy into raising your kids Marge puts her time and energy in making sure her business continues to flourish. That's her five kids. Jennifer, um, like I said, I'm not taking away from the fact that she's not, you know, running some huge conglomerate, some huge company or, you know, running her own business. Uh, Teresa, Teresa's business is her kids and helping um, Joe throughout this legal battle that he's got going on. That's Teresa's five kids, girl. So Jennifer, don't diminish what they're working on because you have five kids, girl. And Marge shouldn't diminish the fact that Jennifer is raising five kids and that is hard work. But I was tickled. Marge, at that point, had drawn a line in the sand. You could tell she was completely, completely annoyed and done with Jennifer. So at that point, they break it up um, and, you know, they're going to go hang out, do whatever. Uh, but as they're breaking up, Marge is talking to Melissa and she's like, you know, that one's on my list. Game on. Everybody understood what I was saying. Teresa understood what I was saying. You understood what I was saying. She's on my list. <laughs> it's the, even the way they argue is totally different. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love it. And I just ended it with Marge is pissed. So we see um, the next episode, Marge and Jennifer are going to be going at it. Jennifer, girl... <laughs> You are really a knucklehead. And and when you're being a knucklehead, you you are really trying to um invalidate whatever it is um said person is speaking on passionately about. And that's what is so annoying about you, girl. <laughs> All right, y'all, that was the end of the episode. Y'all get down in the comments. I didn't discuss everything in the comment section. That's where you guys get to chime in and bring forth what stood out to you that I didn't discuss um, in the episode. All right? All right. I'm out. All right, y'all, that's all I got. Get down in the comment section. The comment section is where we continue the conversation. Or you can head on over to the hotline. The telephone number to the hotline is area code 470-729-1909. Just know that your voicemail may be played in a future video. Let me give a shout out to the notification squad. Thank y'all so much for your support. It warms my heart to see my die hearts down in the comments supporting what it is that I bring to the YouTube streets. If you've come across this video and are not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. I would love to have you. We're no mess. We're no drama. We pretty much have a good time over here on Beautiful Soul Speaks. Um, as long as you're respectful to other commenters and respect to the host. We have no problems at all. Thank you so much to my Patreon peeps. Your financial support is very much appreciated. If you'd like to donate to my channel, my cash app handle is dollar sign beautiful soul speaks. You can also check the description box. I have handles for PayPal and Venmo. As we head out, don't forget to click that thumbs up. The more thumbs up I get, the more recognized I get out here in these YouTube streets. Remember to be good to yourselves and each other, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.